I've been asked what are the pitfalls to avoid when you're running a training course or indeed doing a shorter presentation, but particularly when you're running a training course, what are the things to avoid? And I've got a list here of the seven self-imposed pitfalls, the seven self-imposed mistakes. I've made all of these, by the way, over the years. So this is based on bitter experience, but they're all quite easy to avoid. And if you avoid these seven, you'll probably avoid 90% of what can go wrong on a course. Now, obviously, delegates can do strange things. There can be problems with the venue, but these are self-imposed problems. So the first one to avoid is being late or being only just on time. Because if you come rushing into the venue with 10 minutes to go, you're going to be flustered. You're going to be worrying about what to say. You're going to be stressed. You're probably out of breath as well. So you want to be there really early so that you can be calm, get everything in your mind, get acclimatised to the feel of the place, maybe chat a bit to some of the people who are going to be on the course as they arrive so that you've got a bond with them before you even start. So don't arrive late, don't arrive slightly early, arrive really early. Allow loads of time because traffic varies, you don't know how bad it's going to be, so be there early. And if it's a Zoom session as well, you don't want to be logging on with one minute to spare and discovering that your webcam's decided to not work or there's a problem with your microphone just today. So that's the first self-inflicted problem, not allowing enough time. Now, my second one is technology. And you may say, well, it's not my fault if the tech goes wrong. But it is really, because I think it's your job to be really, really on top of the tech. Rehearse it, use it lots of times so that you really know how it works. Something like uh, breakout rooms in Zoom, do you know how that works? Your projector connecting to your laptop, connecting to other people's laptops, or connecting your laptop to TVs, do you really understand how that works? And also, have you got spares of everything? Spare wires, everything. Because the last thing you want is to be let down by the tech. That should just be a detail that's invisible to your audience. So that's a self-inflicted problem if you're frightened of your own technology. By the way, a, a subset of that is to keep it simple. You know, just don't use complicated, fancy computer techniques to present. That's why I like writing on a whiteboard. You know where you are with a whiteboard. Now. My third self-inflicted wound, really, is bad PowerPoint slides. And I've seen so many talks where they, they actually say, I'm sorry if you can't read this. And you just think, what are you doing? You even know that the writing's incredibly small. So the last thing we want is more than seven things on a PowerPoint slide. The last thing we want is big, long sentences that you have to read out. Ideally, with PowerPoint, you build the points up one at a time to stop them reading ahead. Or at least you make them mysterious so that they can't tell what they are ahead of time. So don't have too many PowerPoint slides. Don't have too many points on your slides. Don't have great big long sentences on your PowerPoint slides. It's just going to bore the audience. They don't need you to read them out if they can already read them. They're just there as place markers, really, so people can see where you are in your talk. So bad PowerPoint, that's a self-inflicted wound, isn't it? Now, my fourth point is about being interactive with the audience. And I think this is a massive opportunity to interact with your audience, but it's also a big self-inflicted loss if you do a talk and you don't interact with the audience. If you just plod through your slides or plod through your memorised speech, that's not a training session. A training session involves talking to the audience, asking them what they think, getting them to give you examples, uh, getting them to give you a whole list of suggestions, uh, giving them exercises to do, asking for their opinion, solving each other's problems, all that sort of stuff. So there should be a workshop element. And I think any talk over about 20 minutes should have a little bit of interactivity. So if you don't do that, that's really just a self-imposed problem. Why would you not make your talk interactive? There are a couple of good reasons why you wouldn't, of course. And one of them is you don't know how long it's going to take if you do that. And the other one is you don't know what's going to happen if you do that. But both of those must be overcome because it's absolutely vital that your session is interactive. And it's exactly the same with Zoom. It's more difficult to do with Zoom and you can't make it as interactive with Zoom. But nevertheless, you've got to make sure it's interactive. Now, number five on my list of self-imposed pitfalls is humour. And 
Of course we want some humour in the training course, but I would be very careful about pre-preparing a joke. It shouldn't be like that, uh, especially as you don't know what the audience is going to be like beforehand, so you can't really prepare. So if something funny happens, that's great. If somebody says something funny, if an idea occurs to you that's amusing, that's great. But be careful about humour. And looking back over the years, I've had the occasional problem when I've been running training courses. They're pretty rare, but they happen. And quite often they're due to humour. And I think, you know, you've got to have some fun when you do a training course, but you have to be careful about humour. You've got to really make sure there isn't going to be somebody in the audience who will be upset. And I've particularly noticed that people don't have a sense of humour about religion. And I personally have a belief that you should be able to joke about anything and it's only a joke. But I have noticed that religious people take it very seriously. And of course, that's their right and that's fine. So don't joke about religion. And there are obviously quite a few other subjects that it would be mad to joke about. But even if you just joke about bad driving or donkeys or something, there is a risk that somebody's going to be upset by it. So we want humour, but we also have to be really careful about will it upset anyone. And that really can be a pitfall. So look out for humour, but don't give up on it. Difficult line to walk, I know. Number six of my list is that one quiet person who you don't notice. And quite often you'll have a great group of people and they'll all be really into it and they'll be laughing and joining in. And there's one person who says nothing. And you've got to be careful about that. I've noticed that if there's an odd person out or they're different, sometimes I've had a group where it's been all men except for one woman, for example, you've got to be really careful you don't get carried away and do a very male-centric training day. And then, of course, that one person will be unhappy. But it may well be just that your humour doesn't work with one person or just the speed or the style of the course doesn't suit that one person. So try to make sure you include everyone. Now, we don't want to pick on quiet people and put them on the spot, but... It is a warning sign if you've got one person who's not saying anything. Just check they're OK. Are you OK with this one? Great. Yeah. Anything you want to ask, feel free. And just make sure they feel included. There may be some reason they may be more junior than the rest of the group, or they may be from a different department or something like that. You don't know when you go in there. So look out for the warning signs. And it really can be a pitfall if there's one person who's not joining in. And my final self-imposed problem, and I think this is actually one of the most difficult things with training, is to finish on time. And the biggest cause, I think, of not finishing on time is bringing too much material. And we always do that. We always bring a, a day and a half's worth for a day. Particularly if we're going to be interactive with the audience, the time can really run away with you if you're not careful. So don't bring too much material, or at least... Have a plan for your day and think really carefully about how long each bit's going to take. And then have some spare stuff you could put in if you need it. And don't worry, you never will need it. So plan the day for about three quarters of what you think. And then the last quarter can be spare stuff that you'll use if necessary. Alternatively, you can have something near the end that you can speed up if you have to. Perhaps an interactive activity, which you can just tell them the answer if necessary and you can make it much quicker if you get into time trouble. But bringing too much material is a small crime. And if you let it make you run over and take longer than you should do, that's a big crime. You must never finish a training day late. And that really is a completely self-imposed problem. That's a pitfall that you have chosen to jump into. So think carefully about your timing. Have a time buffer at the end that you can take out or speed up. Don't bring too much material. So never finish late. So those, I think, are the big seven pitfalls when you're doing a training session. They apply to presentations as well, but more so when it's a training session, I think. If you can avoid those seven, you'll be fine. And as always, if you are thinking of becoming a full-time trainer, and I would totally recommend it, I love it, it's the best job in the world, it's really well paid as well, then please do contact me on the link below, because I'm coaching a small number of people to be successful freelance trainers. So give me a call, we can talk, maybe I can help you.